Welcome to this week's edition of Dropping Dimes here on Collider. Uh, I am your host, Matt Nost, and uh, I am joined by my fellow NBA fan, Mr. Mateen Stewart. How are you, sir? I'm good. How are you, sir? Uh, I'm I'm all right. It's uh, It's been a good week of basketball. There was yeah. the, the Kobe Memorial. We can start there since it's kind of like a big, you know, huge mm-hmm. thing. I watched some of it live on Twitter, which is kind of cool that they were streaming it there. And then went back later and was on YouTube and, and you know watched through all the speeches and all that jazz. I didn't uh, I didn't watch the musical numbers. Uh, I watched Beyonce. Okay, and that was it. Uh, and then I I saw Christina Aguilera singing. I didn't realize that that was Christina Aguilera singing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, did you see Alicia Keys's really strange outfit? No, I did not. I it did not see Alicia Keys. It looked like she took outfit. the armrests off a purple couch, and that was over her shoulders. It was this huge, poofy, 80s-inspired, cocaine-fueled, like, I don't know what the fuck she was wearing. Okay. But, uh, yeah, she played Moonlight Sonata. Christina mm. Aguilera sang Ave Maria. I don't know what Beyonce did. She did a song that he liked, uh, and then she did Halo. Okay. Uh, Halo, I knew. Yeah. And then... Uh, what is it, Ave Maria? Yeah, with that, the Christina Aguilera. Yeah, I think that's the song that he taught himself how to play. Oh, as okay. like an apology to his wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He that's he he taught himself how to play that on the, on the piano. Okay, and I think that's why they they did that song. Um, but yeah, it was cool. Um, I uh, it was a thing where like it happened so long ago that you know you grieve and you grieve and you grieve and then you think you're done and then it's like oh wow this is happening ah yeah yeah um a lot of people were uh surprised that his parents didn't speak at his at his at his funeral you, i mean you could say cuz they wanted to uh, obviously honor Gigi as well mm-hmm. so that one uh female college uh basketball player from Oregon what is her name uh Sabrina, Sabrina she just broke the too. yeah 2000 that, points 1000 assists 1000 yeah. rebounds yeah against Stanford i saw yeah. that uh, her and uh Gino Ariema, and that was kind of a hybrid between the two, and then mm-hmm. Diana Taurasi, once again, a hybrid between the two. But, yeah, I mean, no Jerry West, no Magic. Yeah, no Magic. No, um... Yeah, his parents, obviously. Yeah, Paul didn't, didn't say anything. Yeah, Derek um, Fisher. Yeah. I mean, everyone couldn't talk, because, I mean, if, if you had all the people that wanted to talk, could, could talk, it, it, it'd still be going on today. Exactly. Uh, but Michael Jordan gave us classic moments. Classic moments. Well, between yeah, him and Shaq and Kimmel both had all three had great lines. Yeah. Jordan's I don't want to, you know, see another damn crying meme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like and they cut to Curry right after he said it, and that was the laugh I think all of us had. Be like, yeah. A, he knows about it. B, he's sick of it. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, That's great. Yeah. yeah. Everyone laughed and uh the uh there's there's no I in team. There's a me and motherfucker. Yeah, there's an M and a E motherfucker, which I've heard variations, but then when Jack goes back to Rick Fox, he'll be like, you just need to get a rebound or something because he's not passing <laughs> yeah. you the ball. It's like, okay. <laughs> that in the Jimmy Kimmel the, talking about uh, uh, Bill Russell. He was at the game last night wearing mm-hmm. a Kobe jersey. I, I knew we'd get you eventually. <laughs> uh, but it was, it was nice to see the collection of people that came out to honor um, – and it's interesting because since then it's been nonstop. Was was LeBron there or not? Yeah, and he's unwilling to answer the question. Yeah, which, you know, he said he didn't want. He uh, apparently told ESPN whoever was filming, "I don't want to be in any shots. I don't want you know my face on this whatsoever." So he very well could have been there. Yeah, but nobody has any eye hand or uh, eyewitness account. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was there. Yeah, so I, I and he I had to be. And if he wasn't, then that was, it's not like he's disrespected Kobe. Maybe it was just too emotional and he yeah. didn't want to be there. Yeah, Carmelo didn't play. So I actually, uh, I went to the game after it happened. Okay. Like the first game that they played. Yeah. And Carmelo didn't play that game yeah. because he was just too emotional because he said that he had was texting Kobe and they were supposed to hang out that Friday when the Blazers were in town. Oh, really? So he was a, a healthy scratch because he just, it was just too emotional for him. Um, but, but yeah, it was. I was there that that game, and it was, it was super emotional that day. And and even to this day, I was talking to my friend. Like he was like, "That's the kind of thing." Kobe's the kind of guy. You're like, "Oh yeah, he'll he'll walk away from this." You know, like kind of yeah. yeah, yeah. It was just they, like he what he died. I, Kobe. I'm the same age. Yeah, and just like, and then you start looking at his list of accomplishments, and you're like, <laughs> "Dear God, I haven't done anything with my life." <laughs> but. Just like it's the prime of his life, mm-hmm. he'd already won an Oscar. Yeah. He's gonna, you know, vault beyond this, and who knows what the years, yeah. the future holds. I think his, his the second half of his career would have been ridiculous, but um, he died a legend. 
you know. Yeah. He'll, he'll be immortalized forever. And within uh, basketball, so I did a show, obviously, right after that. And I had Moses on, who's a big Lakers fan. Mm -hmm. And just talking about the fact that all, by and large, all the big basketball icons are still alive. Mm -hmm. So this is a rarity within basketball world. I mean, yeah. baseball, you know, it's been around for so long that numerous individuals have passed away. And football as well, their life expectancy is so much shorter. Whereas in basketball, it's like you still have Russell. You still have Magic and and Bird. You've and got Jordan. Uh, yeah, uh, Kareem. Yeah. You've got... Well, it's the only one that I can think of that. like Of the big, huge? Yeah. Yeah, him, Moses Malone. Still alive. Yeah. Uh, Dr. J, still alive. Dr. J. Uh, um, Jerry West. Still like you'd, alive. You'd have to go back. George Mikan passed away 15, 17 years ago or something. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty rare, though. Yeah. So to see someone... That we just stopped watching. Yeah, like five years ago. Yeah, it was he was he was active. He was around. Um, I, uh, a thing that his wife said, and a lot of people have said this is like, you know, at least they died together because he, they don't they couldn't live without each other. And I think Vanessa said that too. And they just had like this unbreakable bond, which is over basketball. Man, basketball yeah. is is a bond. Basketball is a bond. Sports in general is a bond from anybody. Like, yeah, around the world, you know, and pick up a ball and let's go. I found it strange that while all of this is going down on the day of its release, that she is or the Bryant family is now suing, suing the yeah. helicopter company and the pilot. Yeah, just like you know what, that was his pilot for how long? Like a decade, like a long, long time. That was yeah. his go-to guy. I don't know if you go after the pilot on this. Yeah, he was. He was. Um, he was Kawhi's guy too. A bunch of guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Kawhi said he'd flown with them. But he'd been Kobe's guy for, you know, as far as I've read, quite a while. Yeah. Uh, and just as the that news announcement comes out on the day of, and you're like, ah, oh, shit. Yeah, it's just, it's a series of unfortunate events. Yeah. And uh, could have been prevented. Yeah. But to air is human. <laughs> and yeah. sometimes those mistakes cost lives, which is the crazy thing about life. Like, the lotus mistake can cost you your life and other people's lives. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was a, but it was a nice ceremony. It was very well done. Mm -hmm. I liked all the little touches. Like they had one rose around, uh, ringing around that little dais or whatever it was for every point he scored. And like, oh, that's that's an interesting little touch. And wow. his jerseys were all lit up, and they had nice floral arrangements for him and Gigi. And mm -hmm. it was just, it was very tastefully done. Mm -hmm. And I liked that they limited the number of speakers because, like you said, people it, could. Yeah. Want to speak forever. Yeah. Exactly. We could have gone to the fans that were there. Yeah. They all could have given their 30 seconds. Yeah. And just we would have, because I, I went down to the memorial just to see it. Uh, just, I knew that they were tearing it down. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, I want to go see it before it gets taken down. And just this mass of people and all showing up to pay their respects. Uh, and it's, you know, it's unlike anything that I think, because uh, people are, you know, I was having the discussion with people of, could there be a celebrity, an actor or something that passes that would have this kind of effect? There's I no don't way. think so. Yeah. There's no way, especially not no in way. L.A. Who do we have ownership of that, like that? Nobody. Jack would be the closest. At, but he's far as, Exactly. And he doesn't have the same resonance with the younger generation. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I mean, worldwide, I, I think worldwide, the last time that this affected, like, the world was when Michael Jackson died. Uh, but I was I was arguing like this might be look this is more shocking and bigger like, yeah because when you hear Michael Jackson die of a drug okay well you know and then you find out what he'd been doing yeah, for years and yeah, it's like yeah, oh this yeah. wasn't yeah uh, it's kind of impressive you made it this long yeah 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 taking fentanyl or whatever it was yeah, to fall asleep fentanyl to fall asleep yeah, yeah it's <laughs> like okay that's that's a little excessive Still a bunch of heroin yeah um, but uh but yeah it was just such a shock man it was. Yeah, and, and it affected a lot of people. And uh, I went to the game with my friend, and we had bought these tickets two months ago. And, okay. And then everyone was like, oh, yeah, are you going to sell your ticket? And I was like, I don't think I'm going to sell this ticket. I want <laughs> I want to go. And my friend was coming from New York, and he had always wanted to see a Laker game. Big Kobe fan. Uh, he always says that Kobe saved his life. Okay. Because he was such a Kobe fan that he didn't go to um, uh, the amusement park with his family. Uh, to watch Game Seven against Boston, okay. And when they came back, they had a horrific accident, and like one person died, and like three people 
like are permanently impaired. So he's all like, yeah, yeah. Of his immediate family? Of his immediate family. Holy so, yeah. shit. So he's like, you know, Kobe saved my life because if I wouldn't have been such a fan, I would have just went. But I needed to stay and watch that game. So it was really special for me to go to that game with him. He, like he was just like, just in all of it. So, but yeah, it was a, it was a good moment, and and Monday was 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 a good was a good day, and I and I think, you know, he was properly laid to rest. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, you know, you know, respect and everything else, and uh, to everybody that put it together, it was very well done, mm-hmm. uh, and you know, it was nice to see, and hopefully. That is the type of memorial that is basically bequeathed to him. I know that there's the Colorado stuff. Yeah. That's always going to taint his legacy to some degree, and, and understandably so. Uh, but, you know, if you look at the the list of accomplishments, you should honor someone that has given so much back and potentially acknowledge the the big stain on his record, too. Uh, but, you know, it was, it was cathartic to watch, and, uh, you know, uh, I enjoyed I don't want to say I enjoyed it. That seems like the wrong yeah. word to say, but it was an enjoyable yeah. to sit and watch and everybody just recount, you know, what he meant to them. Yeah, it meant a lot to a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, all right, well, moving on. So last night was a big matchup, a potentially foreseeable 1-8 matchup. Mm-hmm. And uh, what I sent to you was basically just Zion. Let's mm-hmm. talk about Zion because he's Zion. now got 13 games under his belt. Uh, I read a stat yesterday that... If had he shot over, he had four straight games of shooting 55% or better, and had he done it last night, which he didn't, he just shot 44%. But that would be, I think, the only time in NBA history that's ever been done. Mm -hmm. And we're only 13 games into this guy's, you know, uh, tenure thus far within the NBA. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think the most impressive thing about him is the free throw shooting. Mm -hmm. Because it makes him, if he's going to draw that much contact, you need to be able to shoot free throws. And he's like an 80, 85%. I think he went 15 to 17 or something along those lines last night. Just like, that makes you even more lethal. And watching him, he creates such a gravity. Like, he goes down there and all of a sudden defense collapses. It should open up spacing Mm -hmm. and free up, you know, Redick, who didn't have a good game last night, who's been in and out of their lineup. Like, they hadn't found consistency with him. But it frees up Ingram to do more, maybe gets Ball a few more open looks at the top of the key, makes Josh Hart more effective. Yeah, he's he's, he's polarizing, man. It's just, I, you're like, oh, wow, it's amazing what he's doing. He's so big, and, like, someone that big shouldn't move that fast and nope. jump that fast. You know, you, you see a guy being that big, being sluggish, and, like, but he's he's all over the place, man. He's playing defense, and, like, mm-hmm. you know, he's just aggressive. Like, he's just a... A ball hawk, you know, he's everywhere around the ball. And uh yeah, I, I watched the game last night and I was I was looking forward to see how he was gonna do against Anthony Davis. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't quite have the defensive no. like fundamentals yet, no. but his athleticism is so raw and impressive that he can make up for mm-hmm. a decent amount of it at times. He's just like, Okay, well he got back and at least was a presence yeah. down there uh, in the lane. I mean, do you see that clip? I didn't see the game, I just saw the clip where they played the Warriors. He shot a free throw, missed it, got the rebound, went for the layup, missed, missed the it. layup. Yeah. yeah. Other guy, I can't remember who it was, comes down with the rebound. He rips it out of his hands and then goes up for another layup yeah. and gets the foul. Yeah. And you're like, what What do you do? Yeah, you can't do anything about that. Yeah, 285, 290 pounds. Just just a grown-ass man. It, who looks like he still has baby fat. Yeah. I told him he looks like a, the world's largest eighth grader. <laughs> I mean, th- <laughs> think about it in three years when that's all transitioned to muscle. Yeah. You're like, what are you going to do? Nothing. Exactly. Nothing, nothing. They, I, I read somewhere that they had to teach him how to run. Like he was, yeah. Yeah, because of, so right after they had all the the lead up to like, oh, there might be issues with this. And right before he went down, I saw this uh, doctor break down a video of why he's going to be prone to this. Because when his femurs hit his knees, it comes inward. Mm. Slightly, which puts undue pressure on his MCL and ACL. So that's why he was more prone. So they had to reteach him how to run so he reduces that stress. Mm. Will that take? I don't know. Yeah. Hopefully. I mean, they retaught Steph how to run so he doesn't have ankle troubles anymore. So it's possible, but Steph's also not 290 pounds. No, and he's not. He's a little dude. Yeah. He's 190 pounds. Because <laughs> <laughs> everyone forget about that. They were, that's why the, the, Steph's injuries is the reason why Golden State is who they are. Yeah. Because they didn't have to pay him. Exactly. They didn't have to pay him that money. They had a cheap contract because yeah. he wisely went, I might as well take lower than market value, but that's guaranteed for three or four years, whatever yeah. it was. Mm-hmm. 
And then they had the you know the choice eventually of well do we keep him or Monte Ellis and they shipped out Monte Ellis for Andrew Bogut, yeah, which was the wise decision yeah. obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But so then they have the cap space to eventually go out and get KD once they had the the spike the, in the, the salary team, cap. Yeah. Uh, His ankles. But Zion, so the the stats, I had to rejigger the stats a little bit. So in his 13 games, Mm -hmm. they went from, if you just take those versus where they were before him, they were 18th in the league in offensive rating at 109.4. With him, they're now 8th at 114.2. So jumped 10 spots. Before last night's game, they were in 5th place in his 12 games as opposed to 13. Mm. It's not bad. And then defensively, they were 26th in the league, and now they are ninth within his 13 games. Oh, yeah, he's, 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 he's just out of water, man. <laughs> it just makes it better. I, it's, I mean, like if, they, if he was there the whole season, who knows? You know, they, they'd be like fourth or fifth. They're only a half game out, yeah. so uh, we're a half game away from uh, Portland, Portland at nine, yeah. and then three games back of Memphis. But Memphis is, you know, Jaron Jackson Jr. is now going to be out for a little while. Is a John, weeks. Yeah, is John Morant going to be able to to carry this load and basically keep them in the eighth position? You think they, the Pelicans can sneak in? It would be a great story. We got them and you got the Blazers above them. Yeah. I, 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 love, I love Dame, Dame man. So do He's I. So much heart, man. He scored 50, 49 that game that I went to against the Lakers. And oh, he had a string of... Yeah. F you, I'm dropping fifty games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He went. I think it was like six games. He went. He averaged like like forty something, and it was one game he had thirty nine. And if he didn't have that thirty nine game in the middle, he would have had like that Kobe run when Kobe went like oh yeah, yeah like what he's been like six seven games in a row of over forty points. Um, but I don't know Portland. They they have their moments because they played the Pistons the other day. I'm a Pistons fan, um, and I watch condolences. I, yeah, by the way. I watch all their games. Um, and they they were battling, and they were there, and Portland went up by a bunch, and then Detroit came back. But you just don't know what Portland team – well, also Dame is out, but you just don't yeah. know what Portland team is going to show up. Yeah, and then, I mean, McCollum has bounced back. When Dame went out, he mm-hmm. has actually stepped up, but he had had – the beginning of the season was really rough yeah. for him up and down. So, you know, if Dame is going to be out for an extended period, can – Portland he has to, still continue he has to, to play, play on that max contract. He got to play like a, a max player. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they need, well, they need him. And then, you know, Carmelo is actually, you know, he had one 30, uh, 30 point game, mm-hmm. like within the past week. Mm-hmm. And he's been solid, but it's still a defensive liability. Oh, yeah. So you would hope that Whiteside would shore up, who leads the league in blocks, but somehow isn't, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't trust him just because. He, he just has big, mental lapses. Yeah, he had a big game against the Lakers too. I think he had like twenty nine that game too. Um, but you know, he's well. My, well, well, my grandmother was like, he's he's either sugar or shit. Trust <laughs> me, I remember that from the last time you were here. <laughs> yeah. Sugar or shit has been in my head. Yeah. <laughs> Which is sometimes it's true. It's just you get one or the other with yeah. a player. Yeah, uh, you got these guys that are sugar or shit. Man. I mean, you got a three. So I'd be hard pressed to believe that Memphis is going to manage to maintain this over mm-hmm. the last two months of the league. Yeah, I mean, I want I I I do want the Pelicans to go, because um, the NBA also wants the Pelicans to go. Oh yeah, they want Zion. they want Zion in the in the playoffs. So, um, if you're a conspiracy theorist, <laughs> well, I mean, the, you know, Zion versus LeBron round uh, one. That's yeah. actually going to get good ratings for the oh, NBA. It is going to get ma- massive ratings. AD versus his old team. Mm-hmm. You know, the three Lakers that got shipped away against their own team. Like, yeah, so the storylines are great. LA versus LA. <laughs> And I don't think I don't think the Lakers, may, you know, take that in four games. Uh, I, I think, think I say five. Okay, I it just depends on where they're the Pelicans are at health wise. If mm-hmm. Zion is, because if you also look at his numbers, if you take away the first two games when he was on minutes restrictions and you mm-hmm. you pull those off, his numbers and the team's numbers are even better. Mm-hmm. So it's a really a function of you need to play him as much as he as can he physically can play. play yeah. Without getting him hurt, and right now Alvin Gentry is playing him like six to seven minutes at a time, and then subbing him out so he can get some rest, because he also needs to get his conditioning back up at a dude his size. But if they're fully healthy, now it looks really smart that they didn't trade Drew Holiday. Yep. And if they, you know, figure out what exactly their closing lineups are going to be and who you're going to have out there for shooters, because uh, Favors was playing a lot of minutes and last JJ. night. JJ. Yeah. You know, I I saw this that JJ Redick has never missed a playoffs. never missed the playoffs. 
Never. In his entire career, he's never missed the playoffs. So this year could be the first time. I was like, what? When he got traded to New Orleans, that was his joke with the guys of like, don't fuck this up. Don't. Fu- I got a hell of a streak going here. It's 14 years in a row. It's impressive. That's crazy. JJ. Uh, you know, from his Orlando days, and then he was on the Bucks for a short while, and you got Clippers, and you got the Phillies, and or not the Phillies, but the Sixers. <laughs> the Sixers. Uh, it's It's been a pretty impressive run. And out of those two, him and uh, Morrison, I thought Morrison would definitely have a better career. I I don't. They I, were they were that they were that that those that same year those two guys yeah, yeah. It was like it's like white guys leading college basketball. <laughs> when <laughs> how often does that translate yeah, in the yeah, league? Yeah, Jimmer for dead. Yeah, where's he at? Yeah, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. J- I thought that at least Adam Morrison because he's coming in at six nine would be like yeah. But then JJ, you know, everyone thought JJ was going to be a bust. They just had a solid career. Well, because Duke, yeah. I never believe, by and large, until this new iteration of one and dones with Duke, where they just get these supremely talented guys. Yeah. Before that, it was like, oh, he's been at Duke for three to four years. And he's like, I don't trust you. Yeah. None of you Duke guys ever pan out. Grand Hill. Grand Hill's it. Yeah. He's the exception that makes the rule. Yeah. Because before that, it's, hurt, but. yeah. Leitner and Bobby Hurley was roughly around the Grand Hill time. But then uh, before Reddick, what, Trajan Langdon? Who Trajan never, Langdon. Nana. Yeah. Uh... Carlos Boozer. Uh, Boozer, Battier, Elton Brand. Elton Brand had a good career. Battier, Battier was solid. solid. He won a couple championships, didn't he? Yeah. With yeah, with Miami. Yeah. But it's not like he lit the league on fire. No, he wasn't like, because he was Naismith player of the year, I think. Probably. Yeah. He was the he does everything right type of guy. Yeah, he's so, he's so well-spoken. <laughs> I hate when I say that. Because <laughs> it's inherently racist. <laughs> it is. That's why. He thought he went to a private school his whole life. What do you think he was going to sound like? Yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> if, if whenever that crops up and be like, dude, there's there's a way better way to phrase that. There's a way better way. It was always funny when they would say it about Obama. I'm like, uh, he taught at Harvard? Uh, when Biden said it about him? Yeah, I was like, like come on, man. Dude, you cannot. Come you on, cannot you say this. <laughs> Although Biden has a nice history of yes, yes. You know, that, that one earlier yeah. yeah, of uh, on the campaign trail, mm-hmm. you know, of rich kids and, you know, Hey, look! These these black kids can be just as good. like okay. These black kids can be just as good as rich kids. Exactly. He's like, I <laughs> don't have to bring their ethnicity into this. It's just yeah, Biden is a it's, you know good old Joe. Yeah, Malarkey. No more Malarkey. Yeah, his c- campaign is dead. But uh, <laughs> it is. Well, he's pinning everything on winning uh, South Carolina. Yeah. So if he doesn't win South Carolina, let's see if he uh, actually hangs around. But Super Tuesday. I don't think he. he I think he's done. He's done. Yeah. Uh, all right, so you do think, all right, uh, next question is, it came up on the broadcast, some people think that Zion should be in the rookie of year contest. I think or if, conversation. I think he should. If he continues this for another seven games, and and if they make the playoffs, because is the vote is the vote before? Yeah, it's before playoffs. Okay. So if they get into playoffs, the thing is, though, if he plays every game, he'll be at 37 games total. That's a low number. The lowest number ever, I think, is either 50 or 55. Nah, I think you at least got to play half the season. You do? Yeah. So I think Ja... Ja has it. Yeah, unless Ja somehow goes down, is out for the rest of the season, and yeah. Zion, you know, manages... Well, who's to, number two, though? That's a great question. I guess Zion would probably take that vote. Yeah. Because... No one else is like... Not to the degree that they have the ability. I saw Kobe White last night. He was... Oh no, he's he look. Was, I'm a Bulls fan. You're a Pistons was, fan. He was going last night. Yeah, they well, lost, but it, he had 33. I think he's three games in a row. He's had 30 over 33 well, points. Him and Levine go off, and we still manage to lose by two. Welcome yeah. to the Bulls. Yeah, Levine goes off, we lose by two. Yeah, yeah. they were they were down by 24, and then they came back, and Levine and Kobe White was just going at it, just going. And I was like, wow, I had never seen this kid play like this. I hadn't seen him play since he'd been a Bulls. Oh, he can shoot. Yeah, he's flat just, out. He's going. You yeah, know? there have uh, been numerous moments leading up to this past week, week and a half, where you're like, this kid's got something. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know, our coaches. I don't even know who the coach of the Bulls is. Uh, Boylan, uh, former Spurs assistant coach. Uh, uh, the Popovich tree. Yeah, it, uh, it doesn't seem like the players much enjoy him. Mm. And we're pot committed to him. We extended him after his, uh, basically, we didn't do a coaching search. We just hired him straight out. And you're like, Okay, well, this was this the best option available? Is he the first year coach? Uh, first, well, this is cemented his tenure. This is year one of this. I'm putting my stamp on this team. Okay, 
uh, he took over. Oh, I got you. Um, but yeah, now there's going to be upheaval. That they're more than likely either Gar Foreman or Paxson are going to be fired. Uh, I have contributed to billboards to, <laughs> for fire Gar Pax in the past. There was one at All Star Weekend. I think the momentum is finally high enough. Okay. Like I think first take was taping somewhere live, and they had Levine on, and the crowd just started, you know, chanting "Fire Gar Pax." <laughs> yeah, there's been you know that's great. Uh, people have been pushing for this a mm. long time, and uh, honest fingers crossed. Rockets flame out. They fire Maury. We hire Maury. Mm, throw Maury. But just they lost the money with a lot of money with the the whole China fiasco. I think it was twenty million was <sighs> the number potentially in sponsorships and corporate uh, you know uh, money that they lost. And, uh, you know, if they flame out this year, they're so hamstrung that they can't really do much beyond cha- trade James Harden because nobody's going to take Westbrook's contract. No, they don't want it. So if they can't make a finals run this year, then I don't know when they could. Yeah, the Rockets. Uh, it's interesting, this whole pocket Rockets thing. Yeah, the pocket Rockets. It's interesting. Yeah. I don't know if how it's going to stack up against, you know, in a seven-game series when teams can just basically defensively scheme. Yeah. Because uh, we'll they beat see. the Lakers when it first happened that week. Yeah, they've had they've had some good games. I mean, they yeah. had to, like a fluke loss to Phoenix, where it didn't seem like they showed up like mentally. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, that was Monday, right? No, no, I don't think so. Because I had a game Monday. Uh, but that, I mean, you know, so they roll out. Basically, it's five out at all times, and just everybody sits on the wings, mm-hmm. and it opens up the lane for Harden and Westbrook to run in there, and then as soon as the, a defender or two defenders collapse on whoever the driving man is, boom, you have four shooters sitting out there. Uh, and Westbrook has rightly gone, I'm not shooting threes anymore. He's down to like two attempts a game. <laughs> Smart. Well, when you're shooting 24%. <laughs> yeah. Well, he finally was like, you know what? I'm not a three-point shooter, which is what everybody was saying. Look at the numbers, man. You suck at it. You just yeah. suck at it. You're elite at so yeah. many other things. This is not one of the things you're good at. Did you see that video the other day where he's like talking to a fan, like talking shit to a fan? And then in Utah, he was talking shit to a fan. And he was like, man, whatever. And then he just drove and Chase Harden threw it up and he dunked it. Oh, the, yeah, I saw where he's on the baseline. Yeah, he's on the baseline. <laughs> and he just, I mean, yeah, just, flew up over Gobert yeah, and yeah, threw it straight down. down. I, I didn't see him talking to the fan before and I just yeah. saw the play. Yeah, he was talking to the fan before. Because he has like a history of like, Bad yeah. shit happened in Utah. Well, Utah's got a history in general. Yeah, a bad shit happened in Utah. Exactly. <laughs> so we're speaking of racism earlier, mm-hmm. some terrible uh, yeah. Utah things. Although Westbrook had one, I remember on Philly last year, where a fan stood up on the baseline. He was in the second row, and he just double birded him and just went, fuck you. Yeah. And Westbrook looked at him and was like, pointed, at, looked at the ref and was like, are we allowing that? <laughs> Is that fine? The dude got bounced. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Whose man is this? <laughs> that's like that's, I'm all for the fans going, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, heckling yeah. and whatnot. But that I agree with Westbrook on that. Like I was. I think that's a that's a fun, that's a like a famous uh, gif. Whose man is this? exactly so just the double point was like yeah, yeah. what? <laughs> like I agree with Westbrook and be like that's a little excessive, yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can understand not wanting your team to win and mm-hmm. not liking the other team, but this is a bit Fuck much. Yeah. Exactly. Just you can see the veins popping. It's this heavy, overweight guy. He's just. Well, it is Philly. Philly threw snowballs at Santa Claus. So. Yeah, and they threw batteries at, uh, you know, uh, fucking opposing players. And yeah. Philly doesn't have the best track record. Just ask Bill Burr. Yeah. <laughs> An all-time clip. Six minutes. Yeah. That's a pantheon. Yeah. yeah Just, you know, it's screw you. I'm doing yeah. my time. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, on Sunday, Steph Curry is coming back. Yes. On March 1st. Uh, 3-1, and as someone pointed out li- online, I think Steph wants to see if he can come back from 3-1. Like, <laughs> okay, good for you. I, I like that. Uh, I wish this started sooner because at the start of the season, looking at the roster as it's constructed with Clay being out, be like, okay, this is the ultimate test case for if you give Curry Harden's workload, but with Curry's efficiency, can he actually get the numbers that you project with analytics of how much more valuable he would be in that role? In that role. And now we'll kind of get to see that closing out the season. Uh, do you think that they're going to start, like, basically play him full on? You're playing 25, 30 minutes a game? I don't think they are. Um, 
I, I, I watched a video of him yesterday. Shooting those yes. ridiculous threes? Yeah. He's, a, he's an alien. He's, it's he not, is. That's not, that's not even, like, how? Like, it's impossible. <laughs> Do you see the end of the clip where he's just doing yes, like yeah, little three sixties yeah, and yeah. then just grabs the ball and throws and just, it as he's fading away uh-huh. to his right to exit? Yeah, swish, nothing, just nothing. It means I mean he's done it so many times. Yeah, it's Muscle such a memory. Robot. It's such a robot. Um, yeah, people want Steph to be able to to carry a team, but also people forget that he won two MVPs. Yeah, and he is he is a special player. And I'm interested to see because they they've lost what 45 games already. They're terrible. Yeah, and they're awful. They're running out of G League team. What pretty much, and um, yeah, I'm 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 excited. Some people said that Clay might come back. I take towards the end of the season. Yeah, I think they officially put the kibosh on that. Okay. Yeah, I saw the same thing leading up to, and then eventually, uh, was it the GM? Was either the GM or the owner was like, "That's not happening. Mm. He's not coming back this season." Mm. So you just go ahead. Because there were rumors of maybe he plays like the final week of the season, get him yeah. a little run. Yeah, I uh, I had posted a, a, a picture of uh, during All Star break. It was uh, Steph and his wife, mm-hmm. and they were like, you know, they have like this whole thing of being like super Christian. And she made a a statement about like no one ever slides into my DMs or whatever. Like, yeah, because you're like you're like like a super Christian lady. No, yeah, you did, super yeah, wholesome. Yeah, yeah, wholesome. No one's gonna be. Like, so they took a picture. They were on a beach where he's like, he's like grabbing her, lifting her up, grabbing her ass or whatever. And uh, and I was like, that wrist looks pretty good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you can pick her up, yeah, it looks fine. Grab it up. He looks pretty fine. He can't, he can't be like, oh no, I'm still coming back. But he's he's picking his wife up, grabbing her ass with two hands. I'm like, that wrist looks pretty good. And I was like, he might be back this season. He might be. Yeah. And I, I want to see how Wiggins slots in next to him. Mm. Yeah, I forgot about Wiggins. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. they just signed Dragon Bender, who you know Phoenix Phoenix flame out, but mm-hmm. I think he's only like twenty three. Yeah, so it's like, hey, why not? He's a lottery pick. Yeah, yeah, he was, but he just never got any real run with them. They just, I don't know, didn't develop them or didn't didn't fit in their plans. Ultimately, they retacked. I got a couple of Phoenix burnouts now with, with Marquise Chris. Yeah, <laughs> another guy lottery pick that hasn't done anything. And they're talking about, I think it was Kerr saying. For their center rotation, they want Chris and Looney for next year. Yeah. Like, that's that's what they envision for being their center lineup next year. So, hol- holistically, it would be Staff, Clay, yeah. Draymond, yeah. Wiggins, Correct. and Looney. More than likely, because okay. they're starting five. Yeah. And if Wiggins can mature into that, because, like, when he got drafted, what everybody said was, LeBron. if nothing else, he'll be a, a premier defender. Mm-hmm. So in the lead up to the draft, be like, oh, he could be the Pippin to LeBron's Jordan. This is going to be super interesting, and he's never really exhibited like that type of you know ability. Just like a, he's he's not an alpha. He's not an alpha. He's not. So, but Draymond came out last week and said, I can see him being a defensive player of the year candidate. Like mm-hmm. that's what we want to try and get him to get him comfortable in the role. But I think, you know, what you're saying is he's not an alpha. That'll fit in beautifully, beautifully with Golden State. Yeah. Just like you're part of a team, a team that has had tremendous success. We got all the shooters for days, man. So you're going to be open, get your shots, help us play defense. Penetrate and dish. Yeah, be a new Andre Iguodala for us. Yeah. And. With a little more offensive skills. Yeah. Had they gotten Iggy earlier, then it might be a better comp. But mm-hmm. still, Iggy won a finals MVP for him. Yeah. So He won that. Yeah, he won that series for him. I still think it should have gotten to Steph personally, but Iggy was fine to win that the Finals MVP. You're not mad about it. That's the thing. Well, yeah, no, you, know. you slowed LeBron down. Yeah. You didn't stop him. That's the best you can hope you to do. You can't stop him. Yeah, but you slowed him down enough yeah. to where you want to you put spikes on his tires. You're still gonna go because he has like 18 more tires. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's got to stop to change that eventually. Yeah, exactly. But it'll be after the finals. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'll be intrigued, like th- how much. They allow him to play, or do they do they just keep him on a minutes restriction for the foreseeable future, or they just eh, you know you play fifteen tonight and tomorrow night you can play eighteen and twenty two and then we'll get you up into like a regular. But if they go on a run and they start winning and then stuff, everyone's like, oh wow, Steph is Steph. <laughs> well, I mean, there's twenty some odd games left. They could they could easily get above where they're at now, which mm-hmm. is the basement of the league. But who's who's coming out right now? That it's, guy from Memphis. As far as I know, uh, and I don't follow college, but every person that said this this is a weak draft, like this is a really weak draft. Okay. Because I think 
La- uh, uh, the Wiseman, James Wiseman. Okay. From Memphis. Who, that kid? There's a kid from Georgia. Uh, the ball. The ball, LaMelo. Le- LaMelo. Uh, and Golden State came out and said they wouldn't draft him. They don't need him. Yeah, they wouldn't need him. Yeah, why would you need a point guard? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. Maybe they, they package that pick and go and get somebody like a, a top-tier talent. Mm-hmm. Take their pick. Take, you know, what they got from other miscellaneous parts. Yeah. And I like I like Lamelo. He he, uh, I think he's better than his brother, but we shall see. Yeah, I the, don't know. The dad's been quiet. Oh, well, I think by design, because everybody got sick of his shit. Yeah. And it got, never lost. Uh, you know, it was. I didn't. I didn't know. I, he wasn't someone that was compelling enough for me to tune in to watch. But I understood why people found it. So captivating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's just like oh, I take Jordan one on one. And it just leads to a great discussion of you're an idiot and everybody has the same opinion, but it's, you know, easy to pile on. We call that attention seeking behavior. Exactly. <laughs> He's very good at it. Yeah. And he got his Facebook show and the the clothing line that is practically defunct. Yeah. Ball in the family. Uh, which I never watched a second of. I watched a couple episodes of it. Did you? Yeah. The the family's intriguing, you know, when you have like like three sons that played on the same, you know, it's like a movie. Three sons played on the same High school basketball team. They were supposed to play on the same, you know, college basketball team and like go to the NBA and potentially be on the same team. I never thought that was a possibility. Yeah, that's not. Um, but uh, the Morris twins seem to do it a lot. Uh, but yeah, the second son's camp. He's he's done. But uh, I, I like I like Lamelo, and I'm looking forward to seeing where he goes. You know, let's see if his game translates. Detroit Pistons. <laughs> Wow, you guys already came. So apparently the Lakers uh, tried to get Derek. Yeah, Derek Rose. And Piston said, uh, we're going to hold on to him because we want him to be part of our future. Yeah. Which, I, I, look, I, I'm happy to see that he's, you know, back to being a very good player again. Yeah. He's not elite he's not anymore. Great. He's not elite, no. And, you he's know. 31. I, my hope was, though, he would go to the Lakers and get, or another contender and get a, a chip. Championship. Yeah. Just because otherwise he's going to be the only MVP that doesn't make the hall. Mm. So if you can get him as like a six man on a couple of different championship teams, then it solidifies his resume and the, the hall of fame. yeah, get him in the hall of fame. Yeah. Uh, just selfishly as a Bulls fan and a guy who watched a ton of his games and yeah. flat out was blown away by his athleticism. Even if he would have won the college championship, you would have you would have a, a, a better case, a better case for him to get because yeah. he will you know one college championship would have. I mean, they made the championship game, yeah, but without the championship, yeah, it's not as because they lost to. I don't remember. I remember he was piss poor at free throws. Yeah, he kept missing. He was like sixty percent, uh-huh. and just in leading up to the draft, and then once we got the first pick, and they were like, "We're going to take Rose," and in my head, I was like, "We have." We have Heimrich, we have Duhan, we have we have point guards for days. Let's go get the kid from Kansas State, Malik, uh, not uh, Beasley. Beasley. Uh, that's the guy. Everybody loves. Let's get him. That Michael fits Beasley. in. Yeah, Michael Beasley. That fits in with everything. I was dead wrong. Yeah. Uh, you know, which happens. Journeyman, Michael Beasley. Yeah, you know, uh, at least carved out. He's just, he's been a Laker and a Clipper and a, and a uh, Miami, Heat, Miami Heat, and yeah, he's been on every team. It's a bunch of teams in China, and uh, yeah, he's played quite a few different teams. Yeah. But yeah, uh, so so Rose for you guys, uh, it'll be interesting. And if I ever see Blake Griffin, I'm you swing first, okay? You better swing first, Blake. <laughs> oh, I, you guys willingly made that trade. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, that's stupid, but it's what I read was it was. Basically, the calculus was you have a brand new arena and you're not selling tickets. You need to sell tickets. Blake is a big enough name to where you could sell tickets with yeah. that. But now was, he's his legs are dead. Yeah, he's done. He's worried about doing comedy. Yeah, he's done. Yeah. Like, he's no longer top 20. No. So. He's done. At his price point, what his contract is. You 29 guys are, million or something like that? Along those lines. Million? I could look it up, but it's yeah. obscene for the amount of production that you're not going to get. Yeah. Because next three years we have to pay him. Yeah, I mean, and you traded Drummond for nothing. And then we finally got rid of Reggie Jackson because that was another. That was a that you was know, like eighty million dollars for Reggie Jackson. Really? I mean, I remember when John Wall was upset because Reggie signed that deal, and Wall was still under his contract. Yeah. So it was like one of those. But he's like, how is he this dude worth 
almost double what I'm making. You're like, well, yeah, but you signed the deal and yeah. it's got to expire and all that. But at the time, I was like, I, you know, I liked him on OKC, but I, not for that kind of price. No. And now John Wall is collecting money, and not doing nothing. <laughs> which segues <laughs> beautifully in yes. into the next, which yeah. is Bradley Beal, <laughs> flat out gone off in a 53 uh, point game, 55 point game. Yeah. But L's. <laughs> on the 55 point game, there was a shot of him sitting on the bench, just looking at his teammates in utter disgust. <laughs> and he signed his extension, man. Yeah. You're there for. Another, you know, two years minimum, you have a player option on your third year. Third year, year yeah. Uh, that's closing out, so it's this year plus, you know, two and a player option, so yeah. it could be three. Do you, you think he should Paul George it and be you, like, demand you, a trade? You did it to yourself, Brad. You did. Bill. You did, you did flat it to out. yourself. You didn't have to sign the extension. You, you did. wanted to stay in Washington. You thought you and John Wall were going to be, like, the best backcourt. In the, and if they're healthy, I would I would argue to say they might be, but. I know. They're really good, but I, I'd still take like Steph and Clay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I got you. Yeah, Steph and Clay is, is the only one. That's, they're the, they're the best not named Steph and Clay, I think. Harden and Westbrook. Well, oh, yeah. Dame they, and they, CJ. They, they played, but <sighs> Bradley Bill and John yeah, Dame's Wall, better yeah. than either of those two. But CJ is the four. Yeah. So you got you if one it, four yeah. versus two three. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I kind of lead towards the one four. Okay. I can see that. Because it's not like it's a huge drop-off between 3-4. Yeah, and they also don't play defense. Washington. Yeah. John Wall's been left 100% of the time. <laughs> well, and now coming back after this Achilles, yeah. is he still going to have that speed? Yeah. Because that was his best his asset. Yeah. It's just like he's blazingly fast. He's going to go fast. He's going to go right and then come back left. And me, um, my brother and I, we went to a game, and we were just dying laughing because I, like, I was like, watch him. Right? Then left. He went, and he, it happened 10 times in a row where he went right, yep. and he came back left. And if he's going to blow by you and he's going to throw up that left handed dunk, that's that's what he does. But he's so damn quick. Yeah. That it's just like, wow, yeah. you might be able to get in front of this yeah. 20% of the time. But now, if that increases to 50% of the time. Yeah, because Achilles is it's nothing to play with. Yeah. I'm interested to see how KD's going to come back from it. Well, I mean, the practice footage. Like, there's been some release. There was one to him uh, just a couple of days ago where he's just, you know, shooting up so many shots that he is lathered in a thick sweat. Mm. Looks fine, but that's not game speed. I'm not game speed. Although I am of a greater belief that he could bounce back better than John Wall because his game isn't predicated upon speed. No, he's a pure shooter. Yeah. From he's anywhere, anywhere on the floor. Anywhere on the court. Because we, we had this argument. The other day, it was like, who do, who you take at the three? Do you take KD or you take Bird? I, because of KD's size, I take KD. I take, take KD, yeah. I mean, look, Bird is an all-timer, and it's a tough decision, but it's a seven-foot dude that can shoot from anywhere on yeah. the court. No one can guard. No one can guard. So that's hard to replicate. Even though Bird is, I would take him over 99% of other options. I would say the same thing. Yeah, it's you, like, you got to take KD. You do just at that size. Yeah, it's seven foot one. Where it's just like okay, well, you know that game where he got hurt and he had been out and he came in and it was he just was, like what did he score like sixteen in a row? Or dude, something? he was just launching three and yeah. like once they pressed up on him to launch. That's fine. I will blaze right past you. Uh, and then if a, another defender help defender comes up, no problem. I can pull up from twelve feet. A nice little bank shot from the elbow. Not a problem. Not from the elbow, but from the whatever the mid wing area. Like, it doesn't matter. The guy has every tool in his bag. Like, his crossover never looks like it w could work, and it works right, every, right, time. every time. And I, I I always wonder what would happen if he – because if they would have won that game, I think they could have they would have won the series, even if he couldn't have played the next game. Quite possibly. Yeah. But then you have Clay going down, so is, is Curry going to The same enough? game, right? Yeah, it was later that game. Uh, that was ugly. Wasn't it? That was, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, or was it the next game? I think it was the next game. Okay. It went down with his, 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 yeah. That also segues into um, our next topic. <laughs> no. uh, well, the Beal, do you, th I mean, can he force his way out a la PG? Does somebody want, his contract is sitting at 28, 34 and a half and a player option for 37. 37. Yeah. Um, he, to get out of it, he would have to PG his way out of it. Um, but, who who would take that? Who want? I mean, before he signed the extension, 
a lot of people are saying Coming Denver. To Denver? Oh. Because they have enough assets to where it makes it viable for the Wizards. So if you put it if you put that into a trade, you would you would have to give up Jamal Murray. Well now after they, they you know jettisoned, you know, Malik Beasley and other guys, they don't have as many they don't have the depth that they had before of like, oh, we can give you Malik Gary Beasley, Harrison. is he playing this year? Uh not, who's uh who is it that it went to Minnesota? Ah shit. It was This is always good. Dead air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Malik Beasley, Beasley and Wancho Hernan Gomez. They went to Minnesota. Okay. Beasley's been playing really well. Okay. Uh like the other Denver players after the trade were like we're happy for him because he can actually legitimately play in this league. Now he'll get the minutes to do that. But before, you know, you could have done that in Gary Harris and future first and whatever it would have taken before the extension. But once you get the extension, man, that that price point is high. It's very high. Even with the ex- the so high. You got to match player. contracts and what team has enough pieces to do. I'm going to have to do that later. I'm going to go into my trade simulator and see. Uh yeah, I mean, you could. I uh, the Clippers before they made their moves perhaps. But uh, Maybe not now, and I don't know that why they would want him. Yeah, they they're they're solid how they are right now. I think Lakers can't afford him. Nope, they got no tradable assets to get him. That's why they have to win this year. <laughs> they do. They really they do. have to win this year. They have to. I just love leading up to the trade deadline. Be like, oh, he'd be a good you know good piece for the Lakers. And be like, hey, they can't get him. No, no. It's all buyout market or it's yeah. nothing for them. Because the only asset they really have that's it was Cal Kuzma. He makes what two point yeah five nothing million yeah. And he's, uh, I think, averaging 12 and a half points. Yeah. So what are you really going to get in return? Nothing, nothing. I mean, the the best I saw was potentially that trade with uh, Sacramento to get Bogdanovich. Mm. But Sacramento would be fools. To get rid of Bogdanovich. Well, especially for Kuzma. Yeah. Just Bogdanovich is a much better player. Yeah, I want I want Sacramento to be good so bad. Because so, I like those guys that, over there. Yeah, I love De'Aaron Fox. Yeah. And, and Buddy, uh, Hill. Buddy Healed. I think the Harrison Barnes contract was dumb. Yeah, that's another. You steal the money. <laughs> yeah. And that kind of hurts them yeah. with Bogdanovich yeah. now. It's just like, really? What's apples and oranges here? Yeah. I take Bogdanovich every time yeah. over Harrison Barnes. Uh, I I, I want to see them succeed, too. And they, they've got to be killing themselves. Just Cause they got all the talent over there. Well, and they could have had Luka. Yeah. They very easily could have had Luka. And they just. Who did yeah. they, they pay? They took Bagley. Bagley. Who's. Marvin Bagley Jr. So far through two seasons, does not look Bad, like a wise he, decision. He's playing badly. Yeah. <laughs> Marvin Badly. By comparison with a guy that yeah. was in the MVP discussion for the first, you know, third of the season, first yeah. half of the season. He's not in it right now, but he's still part of the overall. This guy's a Are, is Dallas elite. Is Dallas in the playoffs? Yeah, they're in the playoffs as of right now. Okay. Um, I think they're sitting at either sixth or seventh. Here, I can pull it up. Uh but, I mean, you know, he went out for a little while, and they've been up and down. Now he's back. So they're at seventh. But they're six and a half games up on Memphis. Mm. So they got to go into a real tailspin. they got a good cushion. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, OKC has vaulted them by a game. There's a, lot, there's a lot of jumble right in that kind of middle area. There's, you know, you win a couple games, another team loses a couple games, suddenly you're in fourth. You're in fourth. Uh, whereas... Because right, right now is, is Lakers, Clippers... Lakers, Nuggets, Clippers. Uh, Houston. Correct. Uh, five is... Utah. Utah. And then six is... OKC. OKC, Dallas, Memphis. Correct. Okay. So, Denver is five games back of the Lakers, but then they're game and a half up on the Clippers, two and a half up on the Rockets, who have been surging since this new pocket Rockets. Uh, three and a half up on Utah, four up on OKC, and five on Dallas. Yeah. So any of these teams goes on any kind of losing streak. They're screwed. Well, they just, boom, now you're at seven. And the Lakers had one. They went, what, lost like four games in a row or something? They've had a couple yeah. of those this season where. But they also have like won ten games in a row multiple times. So. Exactly. So, I mean, ultimately they're fine. I just, you know, technically right now LeBron is playing the least minutes of his career, I believe, but it's 34 point, like nine. Mm. So he's still playing an obscene amount of minutes. Yeah. 
Like last night, it was glaringly obvious. I tweeted it out. I was like, I want to see the plus-minus numbers from this game alone, or the on-off numbers with LeBron, because they go up by 14. He takes a seat. They're down by four. Okay, plug LeBron back in. They go up by eight. He takes a seat. There, The game is tied. It's like, Jesus, guys, you can't even hold a lead? <laughs> over and over and over again. Yeah. They just go up by these huge double digits. It looks like they got the game in their back pocket. That's what happens when they play the Clippers last time. They went up by like 14, and the Clippers came back in that third quarter. Uh, the Clippers are too deep, although I'm not the biggest fan of that Morris pickup. Uh, but, I mean, they, they hunted after him in free agency. People love the Morris brothers. People love Marcus Morris. But they like Marcus. Keith. Mark Keith. Is uh, the lesser of the two. Yeah, he's the Harvey Grant of the of the bunch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> there can only be one horse. Uh, yeah, it's just, you know, Kawhi's an ISO player. Paul George is an ISO player. Lou Williams is an, an, ISO, player. Is an ISO player. Morris, Marcus Morris is an ISO player. It's just like you're reducing the fluidity of your overall offense. I mean, you, you get Morris. To, you're, you're Morris there. to. Like he's, he mixes things up. He's a, he's a bruiser. Yeah, he's he gives him an school. edge. He gives him an edge, you know. He's no, he takes no prisoners, like all those, like – Euphemisms that people used but about the bruiser. They were already kind of gritty. Yeah. So did they really need more of that? I don't know. They, they play so. I think they got him so the Lakers didn't get him. Yeah, quite possibly. Yeah. Because he would have been a good addition for them. Yeah, because he, 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 he's a knockdown three-point shooter as well. Yeah. And he he shoots at a high percentage. He could easily be their third option. Yeah. As opposed to Kuzma at 12 and a half points. Yeah. And it, why they're not playing Caruso more is beyond me. I don't know. He he checks in, boom, spark plug, and suddenly that team looks fun as hell. Yeah, yeah. eight what eight assists last night. Yeah, he had that block on Lonzo that was just <laughs> disgusting. Yeah, I thought it was a foul at first, and then you see the replay and be like, like nope, he got ball. Uh, that gorgeous little between the legs oh, dime, LeBron. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That was great in real time. Yeah. You just see it coming, and you could look over, and there's uh, two guys in the stands that immediately stood up. They knew what was coming, <laughs> and then the rest of the crowd after the dunk <laughs> stood up, but. Those two guys, I was doing that at home. I went, oh, oh, oh! You just see the quick buildup of like, this is fun. Yeah, I follow them on uh, Instagram, and they, you know, they do the things where they slow it down, and just to see it was like, when in my mind as a basketball player, of like, when did he see? At what point did he see LeBron? He does a quick glance. I think it was over his right shoulder, okay. and then he cuts back left, goes back into the lane, draws the defender in, and goes between the two legs. legs. But and I used to play with a guy like that, where it's like. Your your margin of error was so high because he was so athletic. Like you could just throw a, a pass up, mm -hmm. like just throw it up and he'll go get it. And everyone's like, "Oh my god, that pass is amazing!" I'm like, no, 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 this guy has yeah. a forty. He's that forty good. inch vertical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <No. laughs> well, it's like on uh, Saturdays when we played. Somebody's like, "Oh, you had a good game," and then you look at my team, and be like, "Well, it's just because they had to key on, yeah. you know, you <laughs> or Pap or somebody else," and be like, "It leaves me a little more wide open." <laughs> When they have a true threat to you know be concerned with, but yeah, it's, it, you roll out Kuzma out there, or not Kuzma, but Caruso. Caruso, you know, Caruso, AD, LeBron, Danny Green, like they need shooting out there. So mm -hmm. Danny Green needs to, you know, last night he shot well from three. He's been a little bit up and down. Yeah, he sure yeah. Yeah, he needs to be Danny Green, Toronto Danny Green, which I think he can get there in the finals. Yeah. But he's a good three and D guy though. Which they need. They need yeah. threes. They need the spacing from the shooting. And I like KCP. People were talking shit about KCP earlier this year. But KCP has been like, he's been pretty, I like KCP. This is the first year I've actually enjoyed watching KCP. Yeah. Every other time when he was on those those terrible teams and then last year, it's like, you're doing, you're trying to do too much. And you're just not this guy. And also he had a higher number last year. He was making, he was at 18 million last year. So like him at 18 million is different than him at 12 million this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, but he also can thank uh, Rich Paul. Yeah, Rich Paul for that gorgeous number yeah. because the Lakers were basically trying to like woo LeBron. James. LeBron of like, look, <laughs> we take care of your guys. Uh, you know, just like Milwaukee is doing by having Attentacubo's brother on the team. Yeah, and uh, you know, I think the Lakers have the third other brother on the team. Yeah. And when asked about it, you know, Giannis, oh, would you like to play with all your brothers? And we're like, it'd be great. We played here or, or LA. LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's like, oh, oh yeah. my God, that's where his brother is right now. He's yeah, exactly. For a contract there. So, yeah. And he has a younger brother that's in high school in Milwaukee now. I wonder if that kid's supposed to be any good. Yeah. He's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think they played against LeBron James' son team. 
Oh, really? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a suburb of Milwaukee. The youngest uh, Antetokounmpo. Yeah, I, I I will be intrigued by the Bucks. Is this finally legitimate? Because last year in the playoffs, it just got exposed of, yeah. you know, they. If Chris Middleton isn't going to step up, then all we got to do is shut Giannis down. Giannis down, and their shooters will. They're not going to stay, you know, blazingly hot. Yeah, because only guy that can get a, their own shot, really, is Giannis, and um, the guard, who Bledsoe. Bledsoe. Yeah, but I don't trust. He's one of my least trustworthy on that team. Mm. Uh, just because I don't know what I'm getting night yeah. in, night out from him. Whereas with other dudes like DiVincenzo or Connaughton, it's like, well, I'm going to get effort and then whatever their good skill set is, so great rebounding or defense or whatever else. And if they can plug in other things, which is like Bledsoe, I don't know, he may give us 18 tonight. He may give us eight. And they have the other set of twins, the Lopez twins on their team. Yeah, they do. It's another good set of twins. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean... It's hard to question them when they are they got the fifty wins this quickly. Yeah, and I think and now Robin's knocking down threes. <laughs> well, you know, Splash Mountain. Yeah, <laughs> it's can this translate in the playoffs? Because yeah. I think they're only real. I'm still not a buyer in Toronto. Uh, much too it's fool's grade. Uh, I just think, like as evidence, if you watch the All Star Game when Siakam and Lowry tried to create buckets late in the game, they got stymied every time. Every time. And Siakam is your go-to. Yeah, he's, now they're, your, he's your go-to. Yeah, no. He is. They're getting amazing production. Uh, given the nobodies. Fact that, yeah. Uh, Boucher and, uh, what is it, Matt Smith, mm-hmm. another undrafted, like numerous undrafted guys. And they've had huge injuries, like uh, minimum 10 games. I think Lowry's been out minimum 10 games. Van Vliet, Siakam, Abaka, Gasol, Norman Powell. That's and they're still in That's second place. That's their meat. Yeah. Uh, so well, they won like what fifteen in a row or sixteen in a row? Yeah, fifteen or sixteen. Or I yeah. think it was fifteen. It's super impressive. But I don't know, man. Without like a truly elite guy who can get a bucket no matter what in the playoffs, man, it's gonna be tough. Because they had a like we're talking about devils in the details. Like they had certain shit had to go right for them. Oh yeah, to make it. It wasn't. It wasn't a breeze by. No, Kawhi had to make a lucky ass shot. I don't care what anybody says. That was a lucky shot. It bounced up and went in. It, I bounced four yeah, times yeah, and then yeah, went in. Yeah, that's luck. Had he missed that, they go to OT. Philly wins that yeah, game. Yeah, because the rest of the team was deferring to Kawhi. Nobody else Nobody wanted to shoot. To score. His usage rate was the I think the highest in that game than any game in the playoffs because literally everybody was deferring to him. Mm. Siakam didn't want to shoot. Lowry did not want to shoot. Just nonstop, just give the ball to Kawhi, let Kawhi do something. It wasn't until the finals, like, Van Vliet had his kid, and then suddenly he can't miss a three. Yeah. Like, in the finals, those guys, all those role players stepped up, and they looked elite. But that Philly series, man, they were toast. Yeah. Had Kawhi not made that shot, there is no championship. A lucky shot. <laughs> still, goes in, so you can't it take it away in, from it. But it's still lucky. So, look, for Toronto's sake, I hope I'm eating crow. And they make the finals again. I'm just like, you know what? All these guys are legit. And that makes Nick Nurse a hell of a coach. It does. He can ask whatever number he wants to ask in that contract extension. Did you see last night? So Lopez uh, on Milwaukee got a technical. And supposedly Nurse didn't agree that it was a technical. So he got a technical to make sure it offset before free throws were shot. Oh, wow. That's what Stan Van Gundy was saying on the broadcast. Like, look at him. You know, that's, that's a class move. But... Why would Nurse get a tech in that moment if not to do that? Yeah, that's crazy. That is crazy. It's just yeah. like, wow, that's that's sportsmanship. Yeah. Just don't agree with the call, so then you go out. I don't yeah, know what tech. he did because when they finally the camera cut to him, he looked fine. He, yeah. Just a placid look on his face. Yeah. I don't know. Nick Nurse. Nick Nurse has proven now he's got the best win percentage. He's my coach of the year this year. You give it to him? I'll give it to him. And I think uh, the Lakers coach is number two right now. Vogel? Yeah. Because no one thought he was going to do anything. Oh, I think most people assumed he was going to be on the hot seat just because yeah. when, when your staff... You had hired for Jason Kidd to, yeah, exactly. to be there. Yeah, exactly. Sniping and, yeah. and you've, you know, they, they tried to get Ty Lu and they tried, you know, it's just like a, you weren't their first choice. No, you were like a third choice. Yeah. And then Ty Lu takes an assistant coach job at the Clippers. Oh, right across the street. <sighs> no NBA. But yeah, I think right now... Boston's my second favorite team out of the East. Mm. Tatum's playing otherworldly. Oh, he played out of his mind on Sunday. Uh, I mean, numerous times. That, that game against the Lakers, 
He played awesome. He played great against Toronto last night. Like he's been stepping up. That was a playoff game against the Lakers, just like the Clippers in the early part of the season when he was here in town. Yeah, yeah that was a, that was a playoff game. Yeah. Like they've, I don't know, they've got depth and they've got more than one playmaker who's legit between Tatum and Kimball Walker, who was out and they still almost beat the Lakers. Yeah, the Lakers and Gordon Haywood and Jalen Brown. I think that the the culture changed definitely when when uh, Kyrie left. Huge. Yeah. Massive. Yeah. And he's, uh, I heard he's a little little hard to get along with. Well, I heard uh, I listened to Simmons podcast. He had Rosillo on their Sunday podcast, podcast, whatever. And he, his comp for Kyrie at this point is Stephon Marbury. Ah, uh, and I was like, that's really interesting. That is interesting. Guy with a lot of gifts and whatnot, but that's just kind of offense. flames out in uh, all these different spots. And now that he's had the injuries, right in the heart of a prime of his career. Is this what he's going to be? Somebody with all the talent in the world but can't stay healthy and then yeah. doesn't get along with his teammates, seemingly? Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I see that. I see Stephon Marbury. Kyrie was playing when he was playing. He was averaging, what, 27 uh, and 6? Great season. Yeah. But it didn't seem to make a difference yeah. with the – Are the they Nets. in the playoff race? Kind of. Uh-huh. Um, but if you look at their their best five numbers – their best five does not have Kyrie on it. Mm. Now, the Kyrie best five versus that best five, they played roughly the same amount of minutes, like 110 to 115 minutes. Mm-hmm. But the, the lineup, lineup they've rolled out the most, got 300 and some odd minutes on it, is in the 60th, the 60s-ish for five-man lineups in the league. Mm. So it's not like what they played a lot without him has been successful. But at the same time, I, I, I don't know. They could make a push without Kyrie and then... Because I like Spencer Dinwiddie. So do I, but I think yeah. he needs to get off that team. Yeah. He was a Piston, second rounder. <laughs> so everyone leaves the Pistons and then excels. So. You didn't develop them. Yeah. Therein lies the rub. Uh, Chris Middleton was a Piston, second rounder. <laughs> yeah, but I don't – until, I mean, the past two seasons, I don't think anybody really saw this from Chris Middleton. Oh, no, but I'm just saying, like, you know, he could have been a Piston. But yeah, the Pistons are – you got to say cool guy was going to be. You guys are. He played a couple good games, and now he's like he's coming off the bench. That is the one uh, saving grace for me as a Chicago fan. It's like, well, at least I'm not a Pistons fan. <laughs> Legitimately, I can say that to myself. Outside of the Bad Boys era, uh, I, which I hated the Bad Boys, but I did like the Wallace era. The greatest starting five ever. Okay, well, let's not go too far. <laughs> Considering they may only get one Hall of Famer out of that group. Uh, Possibly two. Uh, I think they got three Hall of Famers. What? Sheed, Ben, and Chauncey? Chauncey. I don't know. They might get. Because Chauncey has the finals MVP, so he has the best case. And she then, is Sheed. She's getting in. She's Hall I of think Famer. Sheed is my favorite of all. How do you not love Sheed? She's a Hall of Cut Famer. Cut the check. Yeah. Uh, but Ben Wallace, you have all the Defensive Player of the Years and whatnot, but, you know, limited offensively. Three and a possible. Who's the possible? Rick, Rip? Rip. Because Rip, Rip won a championship in college. Uh, and he won a championship in the pros. Yeah. It, I mean, it people. is the basketball Hall yeah. of Fame, not the NBA Hall yeah. of Fame. I don't know. It's an interesting case of how many will make it off of that squad. And Tayshawn, just no shot. I don't think Tayshawn makes the Hall of Fame. No. And I don't think Rip makes it either. I think but, Rip, Rip Hamilton makes, makes it. You heard it here today, folks. I'm going to look you right in the camera and tell you. Well, that's – oh, I wonder if we're doing a wide two shot. Usually it's two singles. Okay, well, Rip Hamilton is going to make the Hall of Fame, the Basketball Hall of Fame. So you're saying four then? I are think making four. It. Four out of the five. Pistons. I love it. Before it was a tentative three, now it's four. No, because I thought about it. He won a college championship and an NBA championship. Not a lot of guys have done that. True. It'll vault him over. And he was a starter on both. Yeah. I mean, he's a career average, I don't know, what, 17? I'd have to look it up. That yeah. sounds about right. Yeah, we are, we. Are, I mean, those were Pistons teams that routinely put up eighty points. Yeah. So I was watching. I watched that game the other day against uh, Indiana. It was like what Malice at the Palace? No, 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 no. The playoff game where Tayshawn got that block and it was like seventy-one to sixty-nine. Oh, yeah. That uh, finals against the Spurs uh, was 
uh, I think the only time I'm like I don't I don't care for this. This is the final. Two thousand and five. It's yeah. just so boring to watch. We lost that when Robert Ory hit that three pointer. I'm glad the rules changed yeah. to open up the offense, mm-hmm. just to make make the game, you know, more exciting on nights where I don't have a dog in it. I just want to watch an entertaining watch game, game. Yeah. as opposed to two defenses stymie the other because they can just clog the paint and. <laughs> Nobody shoots threes. It's like, it's like watching Atlanta play. Just just watch to watch Trey Young just get out there and shoot. Watch shots. well. You know he is. I I want to say he's top ten in offensive rating. Mm-hmm. He is dead last of all players in defense. Defense last I saw, which oh, was wow. a couple of days ago. Dead last. That's awful. That is beyond awful, dude. You got to play. And a lot of people want to make the comparison to to Curry, and she's like, yeah, but Curry has can steal the ball. Yeah. Like, he does get outmatched a lot of times playing defense, but he's still got, you know, quick hands Mm -hmm. and can make you pay every once again. He's not dead last in the effing league. Uh, But, yeah, Trey Young could shoot. I saw uh, John Collins said he deserves a max contract. (laughs) I know. (laughs) His representation is under the belief that he's going to get a max contract. Oh, my God. Yeah, Yeah, I don't know about that. Well, if he wasn't on the Hawks, if he was on another team, I think it'd be even more outlandish. Yeah. But the Hawks, maybe they'll He's do done it. nothing, though. Yeah, but they want to retain their yeah. young guy to trade. Yeah, but Max is just bananas. He's utterly bananas. I'd, I'd like to see LaMelo go there. Why? You'd be taking the, the ball out of Trey's hands. No, yeah, put Trey into a, put make him play the two guard. Yeah. <sighs> I think that goes against everything that Trey Young. Trey Young has proven to be elite at one yeah. thing. And now you're like, well, let's see what he does. It's like when Orlando. Well, Melo could play the two. Okay. Yeah, but can he be any good without the ball in his? I don't know. I haven't watched enough of you know his games. Send you some uh, some NBL. Uh, Go right. I've seen I've seen a couple clips, but yeah. I have not watched. And he's shut himself down for the rest of their season. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't think he needs to go there. It, there's no point in putting a round peg into a square hole. <laughs> but it's like uh, Orlando with Oladipo, and they tried to get him to basically be the point guard. And it's like, that's not his skill set. Not a point guard. Yeah. And then it took, I mean, honestly, then going to OKC and by his own admission, being around Russ and seeing what it takes to be that type of individual really taught him this league. And they, so, went to my, they went to Indiana. Yeah. And balled out. And they've been a little bit, a little bit down since he's been back, mm-hmm. they're three and seven in the last ten. They're trying to fit him back in, but at the same time, it's like I, I still have faith. You guys are playing really well without him. You, you get back to playing really well with him. I like Michael Brogdon in there. Yeah, Brogdon, Sabonis, uh, Miles Turner. Miles Turner, I think he had four or five blocks last night, two nights ago, something yeah. like that. Just had a good last night. Know. They blew out uh, Charlotte. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I like that. That team's super interesting. All right, well, let's go ahead and close it there. Yeah. Uh, it was a good, nice uh, discussion yeah. about basketball. Where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Mateen Stewart, M-A-T-E-E-N-S-T-E-W-A-R-T. Also, you can find me every week at the Hollywood Laugh Factory at 945 on Thursdays. Uh, every week, if I'm in town, I'm there. And, um, yeah. Is that your show? Uh, it's Toronto show. Okay. But I, I open the show every week. And then bring him up. It's fun. It's fun. Fun nights. Good. All right. Yeah. Well, please follow Mateen online anywhere uh, at Mateen Stewart. You can follow me at Matt Nost uh, anywhere. Please leave a comment, uh, you know, where you listen to this on uh, YouTube or hit us up on Twitter. Let us know what uh, you thought of the show tonight or today, rather. Uh, and thank you so much for listening to Dropping Dimes this week. That is it. I will see you guys next week. Adios. Adios.